Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Jessica. Hi, it's Jessica. lovely to meet you. Um, and I understand that you're running as an independent candidate um, for the mayor. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to be asking you a few questions um, and to see and how the campaign's going okay. in general, really. Great. Yeah. So what made you decide to run for mayor? Um, Lots of reasons lead up to a decision like that, but um, I worked in the heart of government for 15 years and I know what kind of how the system works, I know how government works, and it really struck me that the, re the, the role of mayor shouldn't be party political. Mm -hmm. And that started to annoy me more and more. So actually that's why I'm standing as an independent candidate, because I think for, for London and what's good for London, we need somebody who rises above all of the party politics and fights for Londoners, not fights all those old party political battles. So I think like so many people in London, I'm just tired of kind of the same old candidates coming forward and think I can bring something much fresher and better for London. Okay, so you mentioned fresher and better. What kind of ideas do you have and why should a young person like myself yeah. vote for yeah. you? One of the things that um, I've, I'm going to be announcing this week actually in the newspapers is I believe that the Mayor should get much more active in education. Mm -hmm. So people say it's not in their direct legal powers to do anything over education, but the Mayor should be actually doing things to transform London and make it better in the future. We have an education system that doesn't work for everybody in London. So we don't have enough primary school places, the transition to secondary school is really chaotic. When you look at the standards and the, and the results that people achieve, lots of groups get left behind with the education system that we have. It's definitely in the Mayor's gift to be talking more about this, to be lobbying government, to be working with government to build those new school places and saying we need a fairer system that works for everybody because that's how you transform London. And actually that's going to transform London more than a new bus or something will. So, you know, I don't make any... Bikes. Yeah, exactly, which are great, you know, and you can do all of those things, but you should be kind of getting in there and get stuck into education as well. The other thing different is um, I really am going out and focusing on youth in a positive way. So at the moment we have public leaders who talk young people down all the time and only engage with them when they're talking about crime or riots or negative things. And I've announced already that I think we need to be have a much more positive um, conversation with young people across London. I want a young mayor for London and I've said I'd pay for that role out of my own wage. The mayor gets paid a lot of money. You can afford to actually give some of that over to actually appoint a, a young mayor for London. Cool. And you mentioned about education. What about extracurricular things? I know you've got two um, young children yeah. yourself and I run a dance company yeah. for children. Um, I work with about a thousand children across London every week providing yeah. affordable dance sessions yeah. um, for them. And I mean, it's not just dance. I know football is probably Absolutely. the most... Um, popular activity yeah. amongst 9 to 14 year olds. Yeah. How do you see your role in, um, even if it's not financial, but supporting yeah. organisations like mine yeah. um, to do the work that yeah. we do? Because I think sometimes that's a, more important than the education itself because not everybody is academic. I mean, yeah. I went to university and so on, but not yeah. everybody. No, two things there is, um, my focus on education, I agree with you that not everybody's academic. So one of the things I've said as well is we need to look at what we teach kids in school. And it needs to be, I think, much more um, focused on giving people the skills that will actually help them be employable at the end of the day. So I've spoken to lots of organisations, for example, that say there is a whole new generation of skills that we need to be teaching kids, whether it's in creative media, where, um, technology, IT skills. Um, so I'd like to focus on that as well. So I agree with you, it's not just the traditional kind of academic subjects as well. Definitely sports. Sport is a fantastic, fantastic way of engaging children um, in kind of discipline, in team working, in fun activities. Um, the Mayor can do a lot in this area actually, so I've said that I would like every borough to be looking at all of their public buildings, so schools, town halls, offices, all of those kind of things, and saying are they underused in the mornings, in the evenings, could you actually open up those public buildings and offer them either at a free rate or you know, a reduced rate, two organisations that run schemes um, for, for youth across London because we have all of these public buildings that are going to waste really in the evenings and all of these organisations and charities that are struggling to deliver their things so let's bring those together and create a lot more opportunities. Okay so once you've got them employable how do you help small businesses like myself um, create jobs? Yeah. Because um, I've probably got, I've got about six people working for me at the yeah. moment but 
if there were funds to do yeah. more apprenticeship schemes yeah. or you know help young businesses yeah. create jobs yeah. what, how do you so once you've got them employable yeah. how do you create the employment I mean, I can't, you know, I would love to say there's Wait loads of money available, <laughs> yeah, and I'm not going to do that yeah. because there isn't. Um, what you can do, and I've spoken to some companies, so I was in a mortgage broker company in the city recently, and they were saying they struggle to get people in with the right skills that they need. You know, a lot of people don't see mortgage broking as a kind of, you know, safe place to be at the mm. moment. Actually, they're doing quite well as a small business, and they wanted to get new people in to the organisation. So they created a bespoke apprenticeship scheme working with government and what they're doing which I really like is they are helping their apprentices to pass the exams that will get them qualified in that profession and if they pass the exams they're guaranteeing them a job at the end of the day. So I'd like to see more of that, more kind of bespoke apprenticeships that actually, as you say, not just get people into the, to the workforce but give them what they need to be able to stay in that as well. I think there are more things as well we can do with, um, with students. If you're at university even, just getting a degree nowadays is not necessarily going to get yeah. you a job. So I think we need to be talking to kids right from school age saying, you need to be doing that hands-on experience as well. So I wouldn't put people off going to university. I think everybody should have the opportunity to go to university. But what's going to set you out and make you more employable and, and able to retain your job is getting some real experience, you know, whether it's volunteering, whether it's doing stuff like this, making, you know, go out and if you want to get into the media, go and make some films, go and do all that kind of thing. Yeah. That's all going to help. So we touched on sport briefly. Yeah. Obviously, we've got a small matter of a small sports day coming up yeah. somewhere in little London. One. Yeah, just yeah. A little one. What are your, your thoughts on, on the Olympics? The amount of money that, I mean, apparently, if the papers are to be news, £41 million has yeah. been spent on the opening ceremony alone. How, if you were mayor, how would you make sure that there's a legacy for that? Yeah. And, you know, they talk a lot about legacy and legacy projects, but as you just said, there's not a huge amount of money around to sustain it. So what would you do in ensuring that all this money that has been spent and all this yeah. hype, you know, that it's sustainable and yeah. kids can access it? Just to say, I think the Olympics is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely pro the Olympics, and I think yeah. we need to do everything we can to make sure this is the best moment that we've had in London. But absolutely, let's exploit that and capitalise on it. Definitely. There is a moment, I was talking to the Cab Drivers Association yesterday actually, and they were saying we won't feel the benefits of the Olympics until probably next year. But to do that, we need to make sure that we promote all the good things that people see during the Olympics this summer, promote those in the tourist industry going forward. So actually, statistics show a lot of people are put off coming to a capital city during the Olympics because they think it's going to be too crowded. To but what they will do is they'll see on telly all of the fantastic things that London has to offer. So as the mayor, I need to be then using that moment to go out to all of, the, all of the places that want to come, send tourists here, send visitors here, and say, you saw all the fantastic things we can do, now let's let tra translate that into visitor numbers. So that's one thing that we can do. But I'd like to treat the Olympics as kind of a big pilot. So everything that we do, whether it's the new cycle lanes that are being in operation for the Olympics, whether it's the new travel arrangements, getting people to work more flexibly from home. You know, lots of organisations are saying, can you try out whether your staff can actually work from home more flexibly during the six weeks of the kind of Olympic period? Let's evaluate all of that and mm -hmm. see what works and build on it yeah. and not lose it. And I think the danger is, because I've come from the civil service, in a bureaucracy sometimes you can lose all of that. So I think we just need to be quite relentless and say, don't lose all of that experience during the Olympics. Let's see what works well. I think it's well. about reassuring people as well, because I have heard like some older people saying they've had to learn to shop online because they'd be quite yeah. scared to go out yeah. during, during the Olympics. So, Which is not necessarily a bad thing, actually, mm. because... Um, Getting, getting kind of um, older people online is actually quite a positive thing oh, yeah. for a lot of them. So yeah. if there's a bit of a nudge going on there, maybe that's quite a good thing actually as well. Cool. And finally, um, I think it's awesome that you're, you're running Independent Woman, yeah. um, as, as the song says. What, what advice would you give to young girls and, you know, because... I think for girls, it is, we, do, we do have it tough, don't we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> and, you know, doing. in school there's a, you know, there's a, it's hard there's body image and there's yeah. all this stuff going on. How would you kind of promote, you know, that girl power thing again, I think? Yeah. Mm. I've done lots of work on gender issues, gender mm. equality in my career. And the one message that I always give to girls is um, aim as high as possible. 
So if people tell you you can't have it all, don't believe it. You can have it all. And the one thing you shouldn't let yourself um, prevent yourself from reaching that potential is your own aspirations. So reach as high as you can possibly reach and keep, keep going until somebody gives you a good reason to stop. So I know there's loads of challenges, but don't let your own confidence and your own limitations stop you fulfilling that potential. Okay, so quite keen to obviously talk about young people in a very yeah. positive way and a positive light, but you know, there are, and it is a minority yeah. of young people who do get themselves involved in crime and yeah. um, unsocial activities. Yeah. How would you kind of look to, we know you can't change that, but decrease maybe yeah. the amount of antisocial things that are happening in quite a lot of communities in London. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. It is a minority and overall crime is going down, but that doesn't help people who are living right in the middle of it where there are pockets of really serious crime, and in particular knife crime is on the increase. Um, you have to tackle the immediate issues, so I would certainly support, like all of the candidates are, keeping police numbers up and trying to get the kind of safer neighbourhood teams working even better than they are. I think that's been really successful. However, I want to see much more focus on prevention of crime in the first place. So as mayor, I'd put as much effort into evaluation and coordination of all those organisations and initiatives and projects that are aimed at kind of making sure young people go down the right path in the first place. So that more that we can do, it goes back to my, can you help uh, companies and initiatives make it a bit easier for them to put on some of these things for young kids because so many kids that I've spoken to have said they don't want to be hanging around doing nothing they want other things to do and what about in terms of keeping the streets safer um, what are your thoughts on that um, it does go down to I mean people like to see police on the street they do like to see police on the street, so I think we need to, to look at the way we use our police at the moment. Again, I don't want to come out and say I can afford loads more police officers, because the money won't be there for loads more police officers. There's certainly an argument to be said though that the police we have at the moment aren't used as efficiently as they could be. So I do think it's time to have a fundamental review of how we use police at the moment. So they shouldn't be doing back office functions, you can get civilians to do a lot of those. Um, we shouldn't be necessarily paying the overtime that we are. We, they they need to get smarter in the way we use our police officers as well. But again, it goes back to um, the more you can give people in neighbourhoods and in communities other things to do, the less you're going to have problems on the street in the first place. And what do you think of a lot of um, young people don't really have much respect for the police and they don't, they don't really value yeah. um, what they do? How do you see yourself maybe making the relationship between yeah. police and young people better yeah. because yeah. after all the police are surely there to help yeah. people yeah and you're quite right I can and you know I have sympathy with some young people who don't have a great relationship with police because I think some of the practices that the police have employed you know haven't been fair and they have targeted people un unfairly so I can I have huge sympathy with the anger that's out there equally I don't want to do what some of the other candidates are doing, which is do a them or us situation. And I've said I want to be an inclusive mayor and bring people together, so you're quite right. I think police want safer streets, people want safer streets, kids want safer streets. So it's about bringing people together. Um, the police do a lot of work in primary schools, and they find it easy to get into primary schools, and kids love having police in primary schools. Once they get to secondary school, it becomes less cool to like the police coming in and talking to you in, in secondary school, because that's where you're kind of, um, you know, I've got kids of my own and they, they become more independent, then, you know. So actually, I think we need to look at that transition period as well and say, can we keep that relationship between the police and the young community stronger at that moment when kids tend to be starting to move further away from kind of their family backgrounds and, and primary school and everything. So there are some moments where I think you can look at, can we do more joint initiatives between the police, social workers, all the other kind of public services as well, and children at those kind of key moments as well. Cool. And one thing I didn't ask you before, if people kind of like what you're saying and stuff, how can they, how can they follow you? How can they find oh, out yeah, more about right. you? Thank you. <laughs> I've got a website, cool. which is um, www.siobonformare.com mm -hmm. and I'm on Twitter at Siobon4 as a number, mayor as well. My name is, I know it's confusing to some people because it's a Gaelic name, oh. but if you Google Siobon Benita Mayor, you'll come up with all of my channels. And so, Facebook. And, and Facebook stuff. as well. And I need loads of people following me on Twitter. Cool. Yeah. I'll follow. Brilliant. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>